Hello everybody. It looks like the European car manufacturing industry is having trouble, Germany in particular. And it also looks like the battery electric vehicle dream is over. So here's my catchy phrase. Um, and, and the reason why this is happening has all to do with, uh, you know, European car industry isn't as competitive as we had hoped it would be, and especially in terms of BEVs. And the plan uh, of the European Union has been to ban the sale of new cars with an internal combustion engine as of 2035. And right now, um, we're going to delve into the figures somewhat later in this in this video. But what, what, what we see is that uh, EV sales in Europe have been... Um, well, they weren't they they weren't up to scratch. They couldn't they couldn't achieve a meaningful level of EV sales each year. And <clears throat> sorry for for coughing. Um, what you see is that um, that that the number of cars in Europe keeps growing. So car ownership is going up and up and up and up and up. Uh, and, and the EV sales just keep. You know, they, they, they basically, they don't even keep track with that growth. EV sales are, cumulative EV sales all over Europe are lower than the growth of total cars in Europe. So Germany, last year, Germany canceled its 10 billion euro EV subsidy scheme. Um... This was because they needed to balance their own budget, uh, which which is a problem for pr most, probably all European countries. Uh, perhaps uh, there's there's an exception, but I don't know which at this moment. Um, and what you also see is that the car manufacturers in Europe they they have a hard time uh, competing, especially against Chinese brands, but also against. Uh, you know, brands from, from Asia in general, Honda, Toyota, you name it. Whereas Suzuki, the, let's not forget Suzuki, there's 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 a, a lot more, but these are the ones that come to mind at this moment. So what you see is that, generally speaking, uh, Europeans tend to drive European cars, yes, we tend to drive Opals, Volkswagens, BMWs, and, and all that stuff. Uh, but Toyotas and all the, the other brands like Kia at this moment, Kia is very popular in Europe. Um, they they are gaining in market segment. They, they're basically gaining in market share. Uh, so, so so this this brings uh, trouble for the EU car manufacturing industry. Now, what you see is that the German uh, car industry is, is struggling in particular, and they employ 780,000 people. And it, it, we know that there's there's one Volkswagen uh, factory out there that, that Volkswagen right now thinks of closing. So let's take a brief look at the, uh, <clears throat> at the news. First, let's look at the news, and then we're going to look at some some charts, some maps, and some figures in order to make um, <clears throat> make sense out of all of this. So, driving on empty, uh, the German government has few options to help an ailing car industry. Uh, the economy minister Robert Habeck, who is the same person who closed the nuclear power plants, he had the last option to keep them open but he decided to close them anyway so now he is reaping the rewards because obviously the german electricity has become incredibly expensive uh, and, and it has been becoming more expensive every day ever since they decided that they wanted to close the nuclear power plants but this is about cars but still it has an energy component in there so Let's continue. Uh, Berlin threats of historic job cuts and plant closures at German car giant Volkswagen and plunging earnings elsewhere in the industry are prompting Federal Economy Minister Robert Habeck to hold a to hold crisis talks on Monday. Um, so what you see is that a large part of the tasks have to be dealt with. 
by Volkswagen itself. So they basically say, well, yes, uh, it's nice that uh, Volkswagen is in trouble and that they can't compete, but they basically say, yes, uh, Volkswagen themselves are to blame. Um, so they're talking about Emden. Emden is a, a place in Germany where there is a Volkswagen uh, power plant and they basically say, well, 30,000 job cuts in Germany are possible. Also, Mercedes-Benz here is downgrading its outlook, uh, saying that they don't expect that they are going to sell many luxury cars. Uh, <clears throat> and, and the issue about these car brands is also that they are they are not just selling cars to the European market or to Germany, but they have a, a, a worldwide customer base. So, so, so the fact that they are uh, struggling to keep up with uh, with their you know, with their competitors, that's a sign uh, that things are bad for the German car manufacturers. So you can see this was on political. Your active has this stuff as well. Anywhere where you look at, you know, news that has to do with cars, economy, uh, maybe energy, you will see this uh, this stuff coming back. And now Ital this is also interesting, but because Italy here, uh, Italy is basically. Uh, right now asking the EU that they have to rethink the internal combustion engine ban, which is, uh, I think there's there's no possible way forward from here. You, you simply have to consider uh, doing this. So, uh, yeah, this, let, let's, let's go to the, to the numbers first, right? Uh, so first, what you see here uh, is I've compiled a list of all the cars, all the cars that are, all the cars that are, for sale in Germany at this moment, and I, and I, and I took the cheapest one out of each uh, model. Um, and, I, and, and I also need to tell you that if you look at the total subsidy and the cars that were subsidized, so, we're, so you have 10, 10 billion uh, euros in subsidy, about 2 million plug-in hybrid, plug hybrids and uh, battery electric vehicles were subsidized. So this brings the uh, average to about 5,000 per vehicle. But that's not, not all. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I misplaced uh, my tab. So we have to do with the, with, with, with the, the numbers that I put into the, um, into the Excel formula excel formula over here so if one of these cars was cheaper than forty thousand, that it would get a nine thousand euro subsidy uh, i believe it was in 2023 and if it was between uh forty thousand and sixty thousand, it would get a seven and a half thousand uh, euro subsidy and above that there would, would be no subsidy so what you see here is these these are all these, these, these this is basically uh, these are basically all the cars uh, that are produced in Germany. So there's Audi, BMW, Mercedes, Opel, Porsche, Volkswagen, and Ford. And I could also put Seat and um, and Skoda on here because they in essence they are Volkswagens as well. They're they're just they they use the exact same. Uh, technical bits, just the, the 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 carriages are different. So what you see here is basically, uh, you know, if 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 you want to buy the cheapest all electric Audi, uh, it, it would cost you fifty five thousand euros without subsidy. That's that's probably like somewhere in the order of. I don't know, sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars, and it it goes all the way up to one hundred and twenty-eight dollars if you want to buy this Audi e-tron, which is like a sports wagon. Uh, the same for for BMW. BMW is uh, slightly cheaper. Uh, then we get Mercedes. You know, also slightly cheaper. The first car that you can get. But when you when you look at Opel and when you look at Volkswagen, uh, they really have some uh, pretty good offerings. If you if you simply want to buy a car that is reasonable to buy, you know, that doesn't cost you uh, a rib or, or doesn't, you don't need a king's ransom to be able to, to buy it. Uh, also, Ford, Ford builds uh, cars in Germany. Uh, so let, let me show you very briefly the, the map of all the 
German car brand. So here we see a map of Germany. Oh, uh, the blue things that you see, that's uh, from my previous map. Those are the, 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 uh, the previous uh, nuclear power plants that were installed in Germany. But when we zoom into Wolfsburg here, because this is basically the, the, the birthplace of the birthplace of Volkswagen. But if you look at, Vol at Wolfsburg in, in total, and if you look at Volkswagen, uh, I mean, Volkswagen is at least, let's say, one-fifth of the size of Wolfsburg, maybe even one-fourth. Um, as you can see, they, they take up a lot of space. So these are all the production facilities uh, where they build parts, where they build cars, uh, where, they, where they assemble these cars. But what is particularly interesting about this picture is this here. Uh, this is bringing it, bringing it into a energy context. So if we look at uh, this, this entire facility here, you can see that they have a power plant over here. It, it, it's called Heizkraftwerk Volks, Wolfsburg West. Uh, what it is basically is both a power plant and a heat plant. So what, what they do is they produce power, mostly for the Volkswagen uh, factory. Um, let's see. Um, and it produces heat, uh, partly to heat the, 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 the facility, because obviously these, these facilities also need heat. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, so, so, um, these, these factories also needed to be heated, especially during the cold months when, when people work there and, 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 and it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's not easy to build a, a, a Volkswagen car when you're wearing a winter jacket. So, uh, there's also heat there, but the interesting bit here is that they have a second one. So they have two power plants on the Volkswagen site. So you have this one, they have this one. Now, if we zoom out again, uh, now, unfortunately, I forgot to do Emden, but it, it, it's it's found in like a, a couple of seconds because Emden is here. As you can see, uh, this is also a gigantic factory. So they are about to lose 30,000 jobs here if nothing happens. By the way, it's interesting. Uh, oh no, I thought I thought this would be PV panels, but it's just a roof. So let's go to the other plant. Uh, so Cologne, that's where the Ford factory is. You see, it's pretty big. A lot of the Fords that are driven in Europe are built here. Um, and again, a power plant on site, as you can see here. Right, so this one is gas barn, I believe. I think that these are, uh, yeah, I think that this is a gas plant. Uh, and, and that's a common theme though, for some reason my uh, my thing is trippy. This is a Ford plant as well. Again, this is a Sarloys. There's the power plant over here. So it, it's a common theme. And also, if you look at all these uh, these cities where these, these, these these factories are, they are pretty big and, and thousands of people of those cities work in those plants. This here is Opel. Opel has its own uh, switchyard, as you can see. Uh, I don't know if this is a power plant or not, but it looks like one. It has long pipe. Uh, you see the heat, the heat pipes coming out. And I, I also think that they carry uh, electricity as well. So if we, if I mean, I can, I can show you everything. Uh, no, 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 I'm doing it regardless. Uh, Stuttgart, there's Porsche there. So this is Porsche, Porsche with its own power plant. And then if we go down a little bit, then you get Mercedes. Here's Mercedes with their own power plant. So it, it's a common theme. All these big power plant, all these big uh, car manufacturers, they all have their own power plants. Uh, this is this is man. This is they they build trucks. So that's 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 something different. And there's BMW BMW over there, and BMW is also over here. Uh, oh no! Wait a second. This is a nuclear plant. This is BMW over here, and then over here. So if you look at this this place here, ding golfing, right? Ding golfing. Uh, and you look at the, the the size of the BMW plant. Uh, that that's probably half. Let's say it's one third of the total. No, it's half. 
<laughs> half of the entire half of the entire town is a BMW factory. So they're building a new electricity plant over there. Uh, I believe that this is a an electricity plant over here. Uh, they have loads of solar on their own uh, on their own uh, grounds, uh, and there's uh, switch yards over here. You can see uh, transformers. Uh, yeah, the, these 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 plants do use a lot of power. So back to this uh, to this uh, comparison between Chinese and uh, European cars. Now, what you see is that Chinese cars on offering uh, they, they they have you know, they, they have slightly less width uh, than, than the German cars do. So they go from 20,000 to 90,000. Whereas here, um, let's see, yeah, whereas here, uh, the European, the cheapest car goes from like 21,000 and the most expensive car is like uh, two grand. Uh, and this is, this is for all electrics. Uh, if you look at hybrids, then it even gets crazier. Uh, hybrids go from, and these are mild hybrids, so these are not subsidized the way you see here. So I have to ex exclude those. Uh, mild hybrids go from somewhere around 30,000. Uh, yeah, no, this is still a mild hybrid. So that needs to be excluded as well. Uh, this one needs to be excluded as well. Let's see, let's put that there. Uh, and what we get, so the Opel Astra here, uh, almost uh, 35,000. Uh, 35,000 is the cheapest over here. And if you want to buy some ridiculous big uh, Mercedes Benz SL wagon, which is like a squarish box, it's uh, I think it's an ugly car, but you know, <laughs> it's in the eye of the beholder. Uh, that thing will cost you uh, 263,000. Whereas if you want to go over to Chinese hybrids, I can imagine that Germans are really happy to import the mg3 uh which would cost them fifteen thousand two hundred and fifty euros which is really 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 a low price for one of those cars now do note that these subsidies are no longer there so if you want to buy this mg3 it will still cost you twenty two thousand dollars but twenty two thousand dollars is still cheaper than uh any of the uh hybrid options that Germany, uh, that the German car makers have on option, have have on offer uh, for anyone. Same goes for uh, for the electric vehicle, uh, the Vo Volkswagen ID3 or the Opel Corsa electric and the Opel Frontera electric. They are both twenty one thousand. And if you want to buy one of those build your own dream uh, dolphin cars, that's going to cost you twenty thousand. If you would get the nine thousand subsidy. So does this does this explain why German cars are having a having it hard? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I generally think that Audi, BMW, and Mercedes are larger luxury luxury car brands. Um, uh, I I don't do I think that they deserve uh, do do I think that they deserve to go or I mean, if less people have need of a luxury car. Then, then less people are going to buy luxury cars. Um, I can imagine that more people have need of one of those Opel Corsa electric than would have you know, than than would have to buy something like a BMW i4. I mean, why spend fifty eight thousand euros if you just want to have a car that brings you from A to B? Uh, you know, do some groceries or uh, travel to your aunt, which is twenty miles down the road that way. Uh, you don't need a luxury car to do that, uh, but I don't think that this is that this is the explanation. So when we go go and look at the the total sales of the cars, uh, what you see is that oh, for some reason my news decided to pop up. <laughs> so what you see is here are the figures, the the raw figures that 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 we know that they have sold in from 2017 on to 2023. So in total, they sold about 50, 55,000 uh, EVs, plug-in hybrids, and battery electric vehicles in 2017, 121 in 2018, uh, 230,000 in 2019, and it went up to almost three, uh, no, not three million. Why does it say three million over here? Well, what is this thing doing? Uh, oh, oh yeah. 
course, I'm doing cumulative. <laughs> I'm doing cumulative. So in total, in the end, um, this 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 uh, this five year, six year period uh, netted almost three million EVs. Now, if you look at the the the, the sales, what you see is that it maxed out in 2022. And now it's now it's it's lowering again. What you see here next to this is you have the the the, the blue the blue ones. Those are the EVs. The the orange ones are the the plug-in hybrids, and the green ones. Those are the the cars with internal combustion engines. And what you see is that internal combustion engines still outsell the electric vehicles by big by big margin. Um, so that's something to think about. I mean, you can see it here, non-EV, is that's this uh, row over here. Um, you know, although it was going down, it, it's going up again. It's up from 2022 to 2023, and it's probably up from 2023 to 2024, especially now the subsidies aren't there anymore. But what you see here is uh, combined, this is 700,000 against uh, 2.1 million cars that are being sold. Now here are the figures that I got off the uh, Dutch registration uh, website. So electric drives here you can see uh, German EVs. I don't know if this is if you can if you can if you can read this because these are these are this is a big screen. Um, what you see is that German EVs in total they sold two hundred and eighteen thousand seven hundred and sixty, and this is this year. These are figures of this year, twenty twenty four. Uh, up until August. 62% of all the electric vehicles that were sold in Germany were German-made EVs. 13% were EU-made EVs. 18% were EVs that were not made in Germany, not made in Europe, and also not made in China. So we're talking about Kia, we're talking about Toyota, we're talking about Honda. Uh, Suzuki, perhaps, and then finally you have the Chinese EVs over here, twenty six thousand. So it's only eight percent. So when we, when we look at the pure EVs, so this here includes plug-in hybrid vehicles. This one here includes plug-in hybrid vehicles. This one is just pure battery electric vehicles, uh, no engine in, no combustion engine inside. What you see is a much different chart. The German BEVs are only 41%. Um, and you see EU BEVs, non-EU China BEVs are, you know, th th those constitute 50% of all the sales. German BEVs 41% and Chinese BEVs 11%. Now let's go back to here. Uh, so what you're seeing is that despite these costs, and uh, we know we know which brands that there are, right? can see it right over here so tesla a lot of people buy teslas in germany right uh these are the non-eu non-china bevs these maybe maybe these are european bevs by now because i believe that tesla built a a big plant in berlin uh but here we have okay audi bmw together you know forty thousand. here we have uh some asian asian brands hyundai Right? Why they have two Hyundai's? I don't know. Uh, let's see. MG Rui. Uh, don't know how to to uh, how to pronounce that. That's Chinese. MG is actually a Chinese car brand. Just so you, I thought you would find that interesting. I don't know. Uh, Mercedes German car brand. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Asian. This is Korean. Sangyong is Korean. This here. These two are Asian. Uh, Asian, this is Chinese, why Volkswagen is double here, I don't know, and another Volkswagen, uh, this is just how the, how the website pre presents this, pre presents this, let me, let me show you, uh, because this is the site where it came from, uh, so when you, when you scroll all the way down, uh, you get this, 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 here you have Volkswagen, but here you have VW again, Volkswagen, VW, it's, it's, it's just one of the, peculiarities of this 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 registration uh, website so let's go back to uh to my favorite uh, program in the world excel because with excel i can make, make everything make sense so when you look at the balance this is what you see um 
you know, uh, there's a lot of German cars being sold in Germany, uh, Chinese cars not so much. What I believe that, Ger that the German car brands are uh, experiencing right now is, is, is uh, competition in other countries. So the German market will buy German. There's, there's no question about it, but I, I believe that the German market alone is not, not, not sufficient to keep uh, BMW or Volkswagen or whoever has a big plant in Emden uh, afloat. Uh, they need sales everywhere. They need sales in all of Europe. They need sales in the UK. They need sales in Asia. They need sales in South America. They need sales in North America. Um, so, so that's a problem. Also, what we need to consider here is that a lot of these cars that are produced in Germany don't go overseas because uh, they have their own car manufacturing plants in the United States as well, or perhaps in Canada, or perhaps in Mexico. So, so if we're talking about the German auto industry, so cars that are being produced in Germany, some of them will end up on a boat and go across the Atlantic, will be exported to uh, the United States, probably some Mercedes's, some high-end luxury cars that you don't have to, you know, you, you can't have 10 factories building all the same car if it's a luxury car that you only build 10,000 of a year. Um, so, so or maybe 5,000, I don't know. Um, in any case, it, 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 this is not a problem. But what is the problem is this. And that's basically the question, how relevant are battery electric vehicles? And this is just Germany, right? We're talking about Germany. So the orange bit that you see here, that's regular cars, cars with internal combustion engines. The blue bit that you see here down below, uh, those are the battery electric vehicles, the plug-in hybrid vehicles. There's not even the mild hybrids in there. Mild hybrids don't really count as electric vehicles because they don't have a separate electronic, uh, they don't have an, a separate electro motor in there. What they do is they use their starter motor, which is beefed up. They have a beefed up starter motor and this starter motor uh, adds power to the, to the drivetrain. But what you see here is if, if we, if we go here, right, let, let, let's, uh, let's add uh, data, data, data labels so you can see, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Put them in the middle. So there we have, so, so in the beginning, at the beginning of this adventure, this 10 billion EV subsidy adventure, they had uh, almost 46 million cars, 46 million. At the end, uh, what you see here, oh, wait a second, this is, the, this is, so, so what we, yeah, let's see. <laughs> I flummoxed myself. Okay, so the, the number of, the number of, uh, Cars with an internal combustion engine rose by 200,000. That's basically what we see here. And what we see here is, if we add the data labels as well, is that the number of battery electric cars uh, went up to 2,900,000, 2,800,000. So in essence, what has happened is that not a single battery electric vehicle has replaced a vehicle that has an internal combustion engine because the, the the number of cars with an internal combustion engine has gone up it should have gone down if the battery electric vehicles would have replaced some of these cars and that's one of the the, the that's one of the big problems here is that when you look at um when you look at you know the 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 goal was to sell more electric vehicles sure but was to sell so much more electric vehicles that the number of internal combustion engine vehicles would be go down and, and it's not going down which brings us to you know we have to get serious about this because because it's it's nice that everybody's you know praising battery electric vehicles into the heavens god knows if i could if i could afford one i would buy one but here's the here's here's the trouble i i don't do loans right i only have a loan for for my house i bought my house but i don't do car loans i don't do loans for luxury goods simply because i cannot afford those loans cannot afford those loans so 
To me, such a battery electric vehicle would only be an option if I could buy it secondhand when it would cost 5,000 or 7,500. That would be the only option when I would buy such a BEV. So we have to get serious about this. And I, I wrote this down because I thought that this is the, the, this is the essence. So battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are much hyped, much dreamed of solution to reduce car emissions, but are expensive. And German car makers have, are having a hard time competing with non-German car makers. The rate of growth is disappointing. And I believe that Germany, German, Germany, must ser seriously reconsider its, uh, it, it, its, its stance on battery electric vehicles, on internal combustion engine vehicles, but also on the energy front, reconsider what they're doing because they have made us all so vulnerable. So, um, this has been a disaster that we could have seen coming if we were, if we were, if we had our eyes open. So Schroeder and Angela Merkel, they basically set us up for this. Uh, one of the ways that they have made our competitiveness uh, or weakened our competitiveness is by closing the nuclear power plants in Germany. They had roughly 25 gigawatts of nuclear power. They said, no, that all of that has to go. What we need to do is we have to make ourselves more dependent on Russian gas, Russian imports. And what we got was COVID. We got the 2022 gas energy crisis. Russia invaded Ukraine. And what happened? Uh, electricity prices in Europe exploded. Exploded. This obviously adds a premium to any product that comes out of the European Union. Because we have this inflation. We have this energy crisis. All the prices, everything that we need to do costs more. And it starts costing more and more and more and more. And at the same time, people don't spend and spend more money. So they buy less luxury cars. They, maybe they buy, you know, buying a car as a necessity. They've done that because the number of cars have, has grown. But in the end, the, the number of EVs and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles has not grown because of the you know, there's there's a discrepancy there between having a car for the as a necessity and wanting to have a car that does X, Y, and Z. So I think that uh, Schroeder and Merkel uh, really uh, share a great portion of responsibility in this. Habeck also doesn't get off the hook. Continuing on this 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 thought of uh, why did we lose competitiveness? Have we ever been able to compete? That that that's another question. Just look at the Chinese electricity prices for industry: zero point zero eight eight U.S. dollars per kilowatt hour, and German electricity prices have come down by forty percent this year. Forty percent, almost half. Zero point one six seven. US dollars per kilowatt hour. So our electricity over here in Europe still is double as expensive as it is in China. Chinese wages are lower, and who knows, resource costs probably also are lower. They have to factor in, okay, how do these cars come here from China? They they put them on boats. Transporting cars on, on boats, that, that, that may incur an additional cost on top of these cars. But I don't think that that added cost outweighs the the disadvantage that we have in terms of electricity price, in terms of resource costs, in terms of wages, you name it. So what is the solution? Everybody is thinking about, okay, how are we going to, to fix this? Germany is going to subsidize German cars. That's a thing that I'm pretty sure of because they need to sell more German cars and, and they can do they, they can only do this within Germany. This is something that they did in the past. And, and that's something that they can do. Now there's an idea that they want to impose tariffs on Chinese cars, but the, the German car manufacturers say, please don't do that, because if you do that, then the Chinese will impose tariffs on German cars, which means that the Chinese people will be less inclined to buy German cars and instead buy more Chinese cars, which, 
then defeats the purpose because we sell a lot of luxury cars to China. <laughs> Feel the hurt? So this is basically my conclusion about this. They've worked themselves into a hole and they kept digging. And I think that this is predominantly, uh, predominantly the European leaders, the political leaders that did this. Uh, European political leaders are the ones that made European cars, Euro European produced cars more expensive than they perhaps need to be. Uh, and, and uh, I mean, what, what you see then result is that the auto industry says, listen, if you want to have a, a, a European auto industry uh, beyond 2035, <laughs> Then you really have to reconsider all these 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 rules about you know impo imposing uh, imposing a ban on on, on uh, selling cars that are uh, you know that have an internal combustion engine by twenty thirty five. And about this, I'm going to make a very interesting video in the coming weeks. Uh, we're going to talk about sustainable fuels. Because uh, I don't think that the, 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 the car with the internal combustion engine is that far from it. If you put sustainable fuels in them, you know, then, then the, in the end, you know, uh, in the end, these cars might even be better for the environment than the internal combustion car, or than the battery electric vehicle car. So with that, you made it to the end of this video. Um, I first want to thank some of these Patreon supporters, uh, the Anthropocene Institute. Uh, Adam Bryan has been a very, uh, very uh, gracious supporter of this channel. Christopher Bergen, Daniel C., Romek Pavlowitz, Sandy K., and Tatapani, Brian Campbell, Yes, I still like you. <laughs> Chris Kiefer, Emil, and Eric Meyer. Uh, and then there's a lot more. Uh, if you want to support this channel, as you hear, I don't do loans. Uh, I, I pay everything out of pocket. Everything that's here, I, I basically um, I pulled out of, I, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. I still do that. If you want to support the channel, please go to Patreon and uh, sign up and donate a small amount of money per video. And if you really want to help the channel, like this video and make sure that you comment and share it on Facebook and on Twitter where I'm not. Okay? Thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.